My name is Annika Lucas. I am the founder of an organization in New York called Liberation Prison Yoga. I'm also a survivor of child sex trafficking. I was in a video by Real Women, Real Stories not long ago that traveled all around the world where I shared my story for the first time publicly. I shared about being sold into sex trafficking at the age of six. I shared about rape and torture that I experienced in a pedophile network that was composed largely of VIPs. Since the video has come out, I have read thousands, well, I've read hundreds of comments. There have been thousands of comments as the video was published and then was picked up by other sites. I was also approached by some people who were able to help me identify some of the perpetrators. There's one perpetrator that, like some others, I was able to just type in the country of the person that I knew they were from, which was not in Belgium, politician, and the year, and the person just popped up right, right away. It was amazing. I had no idea that I was dealing with people who were that important. I had no idea that these were people on the world, on the world stage and that they were actually very visible. Now, I can tell you that I went through a process that I've been going through hundreds of times since I've started my healing process over 30 years ago. Just knowing who that person was and seeing pictures of this person, seeing this person on a video, just made the memory that I had of the in incident so vivid and real. And I had to deal once more with the reality of that rape. So I was 10 years old and it was a month before my 11th birthday. I don't know if you know, but as a child, I remember things based on my birthday because my birthday was important. So it was in March of 1974. And one of the places where I was abused, it was not <clears throat> an orgy where I was sometimes taken and brought in late and then I was just mingling with the people that were there. No, this was a place, a mansion where I was taken sometimes and I would just be, have to go straight to a small room. And in that room there was a dirty mattress. And then I would just be there and wait for the men to come. I was always convinced that the next man who was going to come in was going to say, I'm not gonna do this, this is a child. I was 10 years old and I really didn't look a day older. I was very small, I was completely undeveloped. I remember this rape particularly well because I'd actually been protected for about six months. And so I'd gotten used to not being raped. And so I was back in this dirty room and the first man that arrived uh, scared me to death. He looked like a gorilla and he was very gruff. And I thought again, you know, he's going to say, this is a child, I'm not going to do this. But instead he got angry with me and just told me, he didn't tell me, he didn't speak um, my language. He basically motioned for me to take off my clothes. And I remember as I was trying to take off my t-shirt, I got stuck. And so suddenly I was in this space where I somehow thought I was going to be killed and I couldn't see anything and my arms were stuck and my head was covered. And he ripped the shirt off and laughed. And by that time I had gone into what I call my saint personality, that I felt guilty, that I had 
been afraid of this man who was just trying to help me. And I tuned in, which is something that I did to survive. I tuned in to the man and I saw in his face, in his lips specifically, something silly. Something that a little silly boy who has been told that he's stupid a lot. Some boy that was teased and I saw this silly thing, this vulnerability in this man. And so I honed in on that. And as my sane personality, I loved that boy. And I embraced that boy. I gave them something that they, that they needed. They needed to be loved in a way that they hadn't been. And I tuned in to their need and nurtured them. Then I left my body because then he was raping me. I left my body and I went, in this particular case, I went to a lamp that was there and my consciousness was now on the fabric of the lamp, which was woven and beige and the light was shining from within. And it was as if I could see it better than if I would put my eye right on that lamp. As if my consciousness was out of my body and I didn't feel anything. I was just with that fiber of the lampshade. But then when he was about to have an orgasm, I had to come back in my body because this was always the scariest moment because I knew that at any moment those men could decide to kill me and I never knew what, who I really had here. I had to be very careful. And this man um, looked like he was choking and I would see in that moment, I would feel the revulsion because he was gone. He was not present at all. And he was having some kind of a release of something and I was watching it and I was just cold. I was observing this man's darkest shadow, his darkest moment. And I had no respect for that man. And afterwards, he acted happy. He clearly was satisfied and he was trying to speak to me in a foreign language, trying to make conversation with me. Now, I had seen children be murdered. I had heard of a girl being shot for not acting like everything was okay after being raped. And so I took a risk with this man. I stared coldly at him. And I thought, well, he must not be very important because I know he's just kind of silly and he's okay with this. He's not doing anything. He's not going to do anything to me. So it was a great surprise to find that he was number two in a world power. I experienced the process to allow that part that was shut out of my body during that rape, to allow that part to integrate again. I, I felt disbelief, shock. I asked myself the same question that many people in their comments asked, how is it possible? Why? Why would this man who has everything on the surface want to engage in these acts? Emotionally, I was in shock and disbelief. Then I went and felt all this anger I was so furious that someone who does on the surface have everything would allow himself 
to do this. And I was more aware of myself as just a 10 year old girl because now I could see as an adult woman, this man had raped me, I was just 10. I just saw myself as this little girl and this man not stopping himself and I was furious. And I got to this place of, I want revenge. I want to kill this man. And he's been dead for more than 10 years, but I wanted to just have that feeling of hurting this man as badly as he had hurt me. And I went through that stage. And I guess I reached a point of Acceptance, grief, grief for the girl and feeling the pain of having to go through that. Also, an understanding, a renewed understanding and expansion of consciousness and increased love for all beings.